thanks for joining. Instead of today's regular tanning leather session, uh, we are going to be painting. So we're just going to be switching up just a little bit. Uh, and I have professional painter here, Will, and he's going to be painting with me tonight. Um, we are super excited to be painting and building uh, the Lumineth Realm Lords from Games Workshop New Army for Age of Sigmar. And uh, there's a lot of love for these guys online and also in our local community. I think me and Will are like two of probably <laughs> ten players that are wanting to play this new army. Uh, so a little saturation. That's cool. That just means there's going to be a lot on the battles coming I'm up excited here. for it. Um, which also, a little plug, of we are going to be doing uh, Age of Sigmar uh, Escalation League. Hopefully in two weeks is going to be coming back. Um, free advertising. Yeah, free, yeah, yeah, yeah. Shameless plug, right? <laughs> um, so if you guys are interested in learning Warhammer, uh, playing for free, using someone else's army, or just getting back into the Escalation League that kind of got torn apart, uh, we're going to be starting that up again. So yeah. But uh, Will, why don't you... I'm still building my model because I thought, you know, to be in the spirit of being unprepared, Evan, <laughs> I should be unprepared, right? So, Do you yeah. Want to transfer over to the iPhone camera. So, I today am painting the light of Eltharion. Uh, if you know anything about anything in Age of Sigmar, then you've seen this model been spoiled already. It has the lighting on that? Is that all right? It's beautiful. All right. Um, if you want, we can actually move this over to you. Ooh, that's... I can even grab that one that's mine. I'm just going to fix our lighting setup. Don't mind us. Yeah, Will came extra prepared today, uh, primed his model, and also got pretty far, if not done, on basing his miniature. Yep. There you go. Okay. Alright, hopefully that's a little better lighting at least. So, yeah, I just kind of started doing the base on it. Nothing too impressive so far. I still gotta do some highlighting on it. I'm gonna wait on that though. I, I really wanna jump on the armor. I think this dude's gonna look so sick when he's painted. I've already seen some people posting on Reddit uh, what theirs painted up looks like. I've seen some really cool color schemes. Uh, there have been some people who are uh, going with like a, a darker color palette. And they're doing color. like blacks and like, uh, like dirty metals like Necron compound and oh, stuff yeah? like that with uh, like red highlights and they look super cool. They look like evil elves almost. That's but awesome. Goodness gracious. Yeah, the wind's, wind's a little much today. Yeah, if there's a lot of background noise, it's just the windy Lehigh over here. Don't mind us. Windy Lee. Oh, windy Lehigh. Oh, windy Lehigh. Um, I am gonna lay down my trove of paper towels real quick. Yeah, okay, we're just gonna have it on you because that's gonna be more interesting than watching me build this model. It's just plain Legos over there. That's right. All right. So what I have decided so far, get my paint out here. Here we go. So the uh, the plate body on this dude, I want to be this uh, storm host silver. It's gonna be on the plate body. It's going to have a gold trim, and I'm gonna be using the polished. Vallejo gold paint. Um, the uh, chainmail, I'm gonna have room thing steel for that, and then we're just gonna kind of see where I go from there. Um, first thing I do want to do though, oh, I keep getting ahead of myself, but I have a Cantor blue that I'm going to be using for the back of the cape here. I really want to see what that looks like. Um, I'm really excited for it. I've uh, only really worked with light blues in the past. This is going to be my first time like really using a darker blue like this. I'm just going to 
goop a little bit off onto my wet pellet here. That's, that is plenty, actually. That is way too much. Also, if you guys have been wondering uh, what is this mysterious unicorn of a wet pellet I keep on mentioning, uh, Will has actually brought one today. So look at that. Oh, I will swear by these guys. I, uh, I wasn't a believer for the longest time, but then uh, I got one, and it's hard to explain how much it changes the game for you. Uh, its primary use for me is the ability to thin down your paints. It just makes them go on the model a lot easier. Uh, it gives you a, a much more flowy paint job on it, so it's not like so uh, clear as day where your brush strokes were. And you're not just like worrying about your paint anymore. Like you're worrying about your model. Which right, really exactly, yeah. Yeah. And be, being able to just get a small dab on a, on a palette. See, like this little spot right here, that's probably all of the blue I'm going to need for all of the Cantor blue on this body and by just like getting that out of the jar and onto the palette and able to close the pot back up it, it'll actually save you a lot of uh, paint drying up in that pot. Yeah, I primed this with a gray sear because I'm going to be doing most of it silvery or gray. I didn't want to have to fight the uh, black uh, primer if I ended up using that. I feel like it would be just too dark to really bring out anything for it. Sorry if my hand gets in the way. What I probably should do is uh, really quick, actually, I am going to do this. Bit of motion sickness. You want to translation it back over there? Absolutely. I'm just floating this camera over here so that when you guys are watching me. I love these models though. Like that spear is unbelievably long like i knew from the pictures right like the pictures <laughs> they're, they're long but like this is not going in any foam tote that i have like there's no way that's crazy i didn't realize how long those were um while will's still setting up so I'm pretty much going to try to get my guys to be basic Lumin Lumineth Realm Lords. Like, I love the white, gold, and blue scheme. I love the black highlights on the leaders, like the model that Will's painting. So I'm pretty much going to keep it that way. But my little zesty taste that I'm going to try to put into my army is I love, like, absolutely love those min uh, Minotaur models, the big Minotaur Giants. And I thought it was cool if, uh, if, if you're familiar with the Realm Lords, uh, a lot of this is going to go over some of your heads, but the, there's a model squad where they have on their helmets these huge minotaur horns, and I, I don't like it, it looks clunky, it looks really heavy, but I got the idea of I have a lot of gores at home, little minotaur monsters and so I'm gonna get the heads from the gores and I'm gonna put them on the elves and take off the elf heads and I and they're gonna be minotaurs fighting with elves I thought it was gonna be so cool gonna so be sweet I'm excited I'm gonna have half elves half minotaur army so I'm excited for that kit bash those are from the beasts of chaos right they are from the beasts of chaos yeah they uh just switch back over to iPhone real quick um, hmm, I wonder. Oh, yeah, it's fine. Is that all right? Yeah, it's just a little dark, but I think it's gonna be a problem. Um, yeah, I got because I love Minotaurs, um, and it's weird because in the Age of Sigmar lore, they're kind of meant to 
meant out to, made out to be kind of mindless, dumb, you know, chaos creatures. Really? But in 40k, because they are in, actually in 40k, it's just not an army, you know, like they're pirates and stuff. Uh, they're pretty much humanoid. Like, in Blackstone Fortress, it explains them as being, like, they're... There's prejudices against them because they're minotaurs and not pure blood humans, and so people make them out to be dumb, but like they're really not. Interesting. Yeah, I thought that was really cool. So I'm gonna carry that type of mindset into this, where like, you know, like Boros, the Boros have minotaurs, and right. So I was like, yeah, my minotaurs are gonna be smart, cool, elf lovers. <laughs> <laughs> I, I still like kind of disagree with the design choice of having minotaurs with elves for like the lumina like yeah. it seems so weird but like it's not it's not bad it's just like different right it's strange well you're gonna be a you're gonna be begging for forgiveness when they're stomping you in <laughs> <laughs> let's see Yeah, is anyone joining with us yet? What are you guys doing tonight? You guys painting? Just got some other stuff going on. Give us a little message in the chat. Let us know what, what you're up to. You guys painting Lumineth as well? I know a few people picked up their kits. I'm pretty sure Ron Marks has, I, th I think he has all of his models built now. Wow, he punched those out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah he's, he's been really excited for these guys. That's dope, that's cool. And I know, uh, I know Matt got a box, I think, or he's thinking about it. No, yeah, Matt picked up a box. Did you pick up a yeah, box? Yeah, I, uh, oh gosh. I don't know how soon he's going to be painting them. Mm -hmm. so I know he's working on Gloom Spike Gits still. Oh, awesome. But, yeah, I, I'm in a bit of trouble. I don't actually really plan on playing these guys at all. Um, I got them mostly for my girlfriend, who uh, she primarily plays uh, Cities of Sigmar, the uh, Phoenix Gang or Phoenix Guard, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> but uh, she gets like really disheartened sometimes when uh, I'm playing Seraphon, and with the new Seraphon rules, they have a build that makes their spell casting absolutely absurd. And if you can't interact with the spell casting, then you just like risk getting run over super hard before the battle even starts. But uh, some of these guys have insane spell casting abilities that uh, really, really, really make me not want to play against them. <laughs> that is why I am very excited to play them because uh, I have like you know four thousand points of Stormcast Eternals, and they just are not good wizards. And that one game we played against, Will, uh, how many times did you cast Comet on oh, me? Three times a turn, however many turns we played. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> I hardly got to use half my army. It's just, like, I couldn't unbind any of them. So I'm excited for this army because I'm going to get some spells, which I'm not really used to playing with. Spells are so much fun. Like, I don't know what it is. Just like... There, there, there are so many armies I've noticed that have super short hero phases where you get your command point you may use your command point and then like that's it yeah, that happens for sure but just with spell casting it makes like the largest part of the game happen during the hero phase well I'll be right back I'm gonna go prime this model and then we'll start painting ready to prime show you guys progress I've made on this cape so far. Uh, don't know how well you can see that. It's still pretty dark. Maybe here. I moved this light over here thinking that would make it better and then it didn't. Maybe moving the light behind the camera? Yeah. I'm not sure. Hey.
I'm just playing around with some lights right now, just having some fun, not really doing anything. Um, this guy I'm painting right now, uh, like I said, his name is The Light of Eltharion, and it's super cool. Um, I'm going to go into the lore a little bit once Evan gets back, because uh, Evan's really into the lore, and I know he's been wanting to read a bit of it for these guys. But, um... His, uh, his model is really cool. He's got some crazy abilities. My my favorite ability that he has is one called Spirit Armor, which uh, makes it so that he ignores all modifiers uh, when making save rolls for attacks to target him. Uh, whether they're positive or negative, he ignores them. He also takes half damage from all melee and missile attacks, uh, which is just insane. Like, um... It, it rounds the damage up, so, like, you can't, like, take one damage and then half it to zero, unfortunately, because that would be absurd. But still, the ability to take one damage off two damage hits, like, that one single change is huge. Alright, so it's a bit better lighting. I'll get it in here so you can see it a bit. It's just the very first layer of Cantor Blue. It's nothing special, really. Um, I'm going to put one more layer on there just because there's still some brush strokes that are coming through that I would like to dissolve if I can, just on that main base there. All primed up. All primed, primed up. Primed ready to go. Yeah, yeah, I used the same prime that Will did. <laughs> Chef Deep Bone. No, actually, sorry. Wraith Bone. Because um, I am wanting to keep this as light as possible. Sorry, I was probably interrupting something you said. No, you weren't. Um, let's go ahead. Yeah, you can transition back to that other camera. Now that you're starting to paint. If you ever want to do a little close-up, let me know. Um, so, I'm going to be using to base him, I'm going to use Flayed one flesh on his uh, cloak. Keep it a little uh, cream bone color. And then on his armor plates, I'm going to use pallid witch flesh. Because I hate working with white. Um, I'm not going to use white scar. Uh, I don't think I will be highlighting with white scar. I'm going to use pallid witch flesh to highlight his robes anyways. Because I still want to keep this muddied with being clean if that even makes sense um, for the for the shading I thought about using sepia it was just a little too orange for me agrax was a little too bright for me as well um, so I'm gonna try skeleton horde the contrast paint I think I think that's gonna work well um, I'm gonna water it down a little bit but yeah Let's, uh, let's experiment. Yeah, I love that Cantor Blue. I think I'm going to use Cantor Blue on my guy as well. I think it really works, like, especially if you shade and highlight it properly. Right. Like, it really is, a, like, a, like, a royal blue almost. Um, one thing that I noticed about this box set when I opened it up and like looking at pictures of the models and once I actually built this one too <laughs> is just like how how uh, crazy cool these models are right. compared to other models like not to poop on the single Seraphon model that came out this year but like the Realm Shaper engine is a cool model but like compared to this guy it's like nothing like I remember it, it sounds stupid but I remember them spoiling this and me looking at it and like how how are they going to make the, the limbs stand like that without there being a body? Right. <laughs> I, I was so dumb, but <laughs> um, it just shows like the creativeness that can go into designing models like these. Well, I've always... Uh, the Bloodthirster. Are you familiar with the Bloodthirster model uh -uh, from his no. workshop? It's this huge demon, big wings, and he's just standing on... Like, his one foot is in the air... And the other foot isn't even touching the base. It's touching fire that is connected to the base. Like, he's, like, oh. leaping up. It's really cool. 
but I've always, always just been like, that's going to snap someday, you know? Like, that's just going to take off, and it hasn't. And huh. it just stays together, and it's always very deceiving on how much you think the plastic weighs and the pressure, oh, yeah. you know, you think it's going to topple over. And then so you apply it to something as small as this guy, and, like, as long as, you know, you're not <laughs> throwing it against the ground, like, he should stay there for No, it. yeah. Like, it's funny you bring this up, actually, because... It's a really windy day out today, and I was out priming him this morning, and I just left him out on a table in, on my uh, back porch, and the wind blew him off the table, and I actually lost him for like five minutes, because I couldn't find where he was at. Oh, no. But I finally found him, and he was fine. He didn't break at all. There's no pieces I feel loose. But... Oh, gosh. It is a musky day, though. It is freaking warm. Also, is there like a fire somewhere? Yeah, it's up in Saratoga. So really? Like the smoke got so bad today because of the wind that like, it, yeah, like you could smell it indoors here. Like, like I could it, smell it up front. At one point, it got bad enough that it was like literally making my eyes water. Really? That's yeah. what it felt like oh, when yeah, I got here outside. Yeah. yeah. Crazy. Like one of the guys that was playing today actually got an email from the city of Saratoga saying, "Hey, we're evacuating all these houses." <laughs> Don't come back. Jeez. Wow. So he, yeah, he left early so he can go get his wife and kid. Oh, wow. That sounds like a bad fire. Yeah, I, I didn't even know there was a fire. I, yeah, I, I don't know. Until this afternoon. Like, from in here. Hmm. Sounds terrible. Mixed with, like, the wind today, I'm not surprised. I think it spreads super fast. Yeah. yeah. It's like when we have Arizona or California fires and we still get it over here, you know? Oh, yeah. Uh huh. Yeah, we're streaming right now. Okay, you can't see. Oh, oh no, we're using this overhead camera right now. Okay, like all you see is his elbow and the cups. That is literally like you can't see your hands or anything. I mean, to be fair, they probably can't see all too much with that overhead camera either. But yeah, I'm just putting on a thin coat right now. My bone colored cloth. And if you're joining tonight and you're not familiar with Warhammer, you're more either just a painter or maybe you're in D and D, don't be dissuaded. I uh, I do play D and uh, I actually I, my campaign doesn't use models. Um, it's all just kind of theater of the mind. Um, I don't know if Will, do, does your campaign use models? Um, I had a Pathfinder campaign where like three of our party of six had miniatures. Okay. And then I have a D&D campaign where no one does. Hmm. Um, but yeah, don't, don't be dissuaded. Uh, I love playing Warhammer, so does Will. Uh, they're my favorite models to paint, but anything we say... Uh, not that we're <laughs> masters in any way, but definitely can be applied to any miniature. Um, yeah. And I actually, there are a lot of times when, like, WizKids or the Pathfinder team releases a model that, like, I want to convert into my 40k game. Like, the Hydra that came out, I think that's so cool. Like, you can switch out the heads, have you seen that? Yeah. Man, someone was showing that to me. It's super sweet. Yeah. You're not going to be able to see what I'm doing right now because I'm weird and have to paint at awkward angles in order to keep my hands steady. <laughs> I paint like right next to my face. Yeah, same. I like cover the whole model with my hand in order to. <laughs> and so once I'm finished applying all this Cantor blue, though, take a up close yeah if you uh, for some reason are not on our discord paint channel we have two different uh, chats going on one's show and tell and the other is painting tips and tricks um, and we have a lot of people there who are just having fun you know talking to each other having a good time showing off the models asking for help 
Um, it's a really chill place. Uh, it is. Everyone's real friendly. And I usually try to kind of back off because I was very prominent there at the beginning, but I didn't want it to seem like... Yeah, I want it to seem more like a, a community, not like, this is Game Grid, you know? And uh, so I kind of let people talk, and I'll chime in every once in a while, but I really just like seeing everyone kind of get together. Yeah. Um, I, just, I just didn't want it to feel, you know... Pushed. Pushed, yeah. So I I just, simply because I'm an employee, I try to kind of lay back off. But if you uh, if you haven't gotten there yet, just uh, even to meet some friends, kind of share ideas with people, you should join. Yeah, it's really cool because it, it's, it's called the Game Grid Discord. But like, honestly, it's just kind of become this... Uh, this place where local players have a place to go to ask other players oh, yeah. about stuff. Just like, like, some, like a community. Yeah, it's really cool. Um, it like definitely started with uh, all the employees pushing it really hard, trying to get as many people to join as we can, but no. it's it's yeah. become very self-sustaining. It's really cool. Yeah, it's, it's, it's honestly more your guys' channel than it is ours now. Oh, absolutely. I think it's awesome. Honestly, nothing makes or breaks a game quite like the community does. Yeah, that's true. Like, I can't tell you how many games that I've tried out, but the community was terrible, so I just quit because it wasn't worth it. Right. Or, like, how many games even turn to that, even if they don't start that way. Are you eating paint? No, I'm not eating Are you? <laughs> yes, a little bit. <laughs> just, just My favorite YouTuber just. is Miniac. And uh, just to be quick, he paints on his nail. And also, like, if he needs to get paint out of his brush real quick to, like, wet blend, he'll just suck the paint out of his brush. Oh. It tastes disgusting. I believe but, it. Like, it's, uh, it is now a habit, even if I'm not trying to go fast. Interesting. Yeah, That's I know. It's smart, a, though. It's a like, terrible habit, but, I mean, I guess but, like, paint's not that harmful. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. No, no, no. I need to take that back real quick, just in case there's a young person watching. There, do not eat paint. Do not <laughs> eat paint. <laughs> These acrylic paints that we're using in this very low quantity is not harmful, but please do not eat paint. Very, very poisonous. Like, uh, home paint, you know? Yeah. I want to make sure that that was clear. <laughs> make, make sure you read the bottle before you eat the paint. Yeah. Make sure that it doesn't say toxic. Yeah. <laughs> check, yeah, check the food facts before. <gasps> oh, man. It's a little too thick. I'm getting towards the end of applying this Cantor Blue, but... Not there yet. Goodness that gracious. That a big one. A lot of wind going on. Sorry if you're talking in the chat and we're not watching. <laughs> yeah, I, I need to be better about spinning around and checking that. I'll do that in just a second. It's gonna be really depressing when no one said anything. <laughs> <laughs> you know, honestly, it happens a lot. Um, oh, yeah. I know. That's I know a few thing. people that like watch after, like at the leisure, which is totally chill. Um, Jeremy Beard likes getting on a lot, and I love chatting to Jeremy as he's just doing something, painting along with us, doing his thing. Yeah. So I know I said that was probably all the Cantor blue I was gonna need. Um, I lied. <laughs> Like a liar. I definitely like a liar. Definitely needed more. Still getting close, but just a couple, a couple more nooks and crannies I want to get. Um, one thing that would make this model a thousand times easier to paint is painting it before you assemble it. Um, 
this one's got like a kind of a hollow effect where like the body is missing. I don't know how well you can see it, but there is no body inside of the armor. It's just a suit of armor. And so in this case, it you really do need to get like up and behind the cloak and everything like that. But uh, I am incredibly stubborn. Uh, oh yeah. So. It's really cool. Honestly, one of the cooler minis I own. Um, it was one of the first minis that they really showcased when they announced these guys. And I just lost my mind over it. It was so cool, but then I kind of fell out of painting after burning out and uh, lost my hype for it. But once it came out and we got the books in, and or the, uh, the painting box in, it's, uh, it's so cool. Uh -huh. And, like, seeing it built and in front of me, too, is, like, a whole nother reason to be hyped about it, right? Oh, yeah. There's also this, like, I don't know if you get this way, but playing with a painted model, oh, yeah. like, solidifies something for me, you know? It's like, this is my army, my model type of thing. It's like the goal completion at that point, right? It's like, I put in the effort to build and paint this miniature. Right. And now I'm playing a game with it, and it's totally unique to anything else. <clears throat> right. It's also like this sense of accomplishment of like, even though, like, I'm going to try to paint this like Illumineth, you know, and there's going to be a lot of people who bring stuff that looks just like mine, it's, it's more kind of like bonding to the army as well so it's not like territorial at all you know oh yeah yeah i love that i uh i wasn't sure about buying the box set because i was afraid that like because i that's uh between you ron and matt that's three of my regulars th th yeah three of my play group now own this including me that's a fourth so I was, I was kind of on the fence about it because I didn't want it to be like one of those things like, oh, well, great, everyone's playing it now. Right. But that's like the cool thing about Warhammer is it just because you could have all four of us play a game together and no one's army could be the same. Right. Or like this idea, like, you know, I, I, I tell everyone that I play with that I've won one Age of Sigmar game and lost every other Sigmar game and every 40k game I've ever played. And I still play because I love it. I love the lore. So if I ever play an army that is my army, like two armies go against each other, in my mind, I just make a, some theme about it. You know, like I'm playing traitors of my own war band or, you know, it's, it's, yeah. it's never really become a problem for me playing against the same army because it's all just kind of thematic for me. About the movie in the head. Yeah, exactly. I'm just putting some white down on these pads. Once I kind of get a little further, I'll kind of show you my progress right now. I think we'll just kind of stick on that close cam with the will. You still on that? Yeah, still on it. I can switch it overhead if you'd like. I'm actually about done with this cantle blue, so I'm just going to quickly show that off. Um, uh, yeah, there we go. So I've painted the back of the cape here, this cantor blue. Um, it's kind of harder to see, but I also painted the uh, top of the uh, rope skirt on him, cantor blue. Um, I'm going. I'm going to do a lighter blue on the bottom part of the cape, as well as the bottom part of the rope skirt. Oh, I missed a little bit. <laughs> I also want to paint his loin cloth here, uh, the top part at least, cantor blue. I'm just really digging this like deep blue color. Um, really excited to see what this looks like. Maybe I, I like I probably will. I'll probably like I'm probably lying to myself right now that I'm gonna keep this looking exactly luminous because I just love adding something different, you know. Yeah. So I might add like a different color scheme at some point. I don't know. I'm digging what you're doing though. 
I always love those creative, like, uh, brain blasts, for lack of a better word. <laughs> <laughs> Where you're, like, in the middle of a model and you get this idea and you're like, oh, that would be so sick. And you incorporate it and it is sick. Or it's lame. <laughs> then you go back and change it and fix it and then it's mm -hmm. great again. <laughs> I've also done that. And you're right, maybe the Minotaur thing might turn out a little dumb, but I think I'm going to do it regardless. That wasn't a shot at your idea when I said I don't like it. Oh, no, you're, you're fine. Yeah. That wasn't me saying your idea is garbage. No, yeah, yeah. Don't do that. I, I, I understood it as you saying, like, even the Minotaur Giants was a little weird choice in Yeah, mind. just like the Minotaur horns on the base models yeah, are, yeah, yeah. like, strange to me. Don't worry, even if you did, I wouldn't be upset. Am I just racist against Minotaurs? <laughs> I just don't think Minotaurs are good enough to march with elves. <laughs> call, I mean, these call me a racist. These are high elves, so they're. I mean, like, right? These are like high, high elves. I, I, <laughs> literally made of light. Like, what are they doing with Minotaurs? Actually, we talked about this. Uh, I think yesterday of like, usually high elves are in like all lore are kind of like pompous and racist in a way, you know? And like, not not maybe not racist, like elitist. Like, they're the best of the best in their yeah. mind, you know? And I don't think that's the lore for these guys, which I super appreciate, because... I don't know. I, I feel it's like... So overplayed. It is, and like... I just... I want these to be like good guy elves. I yeah. don't know if that's too much to ask for, but... Elves that aren't a-holes to everybody. Right. Think they're uh -huh. better. Um, and I'm the supreme. Yeah, I am supreme. But I guess that comes in the whole, you know, making your own lore for your army. Oh, yeah. Okay. Now, I don't know where I want to go next with this. Got all the Cantor blue on for now. Probably going to have to go back and touch up some places again. I want to work on the trim on the cape, I think. But I don't know if I should do like a gold trim, like I'm planning on doing with the armor, yeah. or if I should do a light blue trim, because this, uh, this bottom part of the cape, I'm going to have a light blue, just like solid light blue color uh -huh. on it, and it, it kind of bleeds into the trim on top. So should I just do the whole trim light blue, you think? I think you should do the whole trim light blue, and then if you want, you can even do like silver highlights, like at every other buckle, maybe? I don't know. That's a good idea. I'll do that, yeah. I think it it would suck to go metallic first and then decide to switch it. Oh, yeah. But if you go light blue first, you can do whatever the freak you want. What I am going to do real quick, though, is because I'm sick of grabbing this, is I am going to glue it down to the base. I should have done this before I painted the cape. <laughs> yeah, I, I forgot. Uh, I usually just use like a, an, a big Advil bottle as like my hold. And I'm super tempted to go up there and just get one of those. Just go buy some Advil. No. <laughs> the, the Games Workshop uh, little model holder. But, uh, I don't know. I didn't recognize those I don't know what everyone else, oh shoot, what everyone else uses to base their models, but. Gorilla Glue Gel is superior. <laughs> I, uh, I've i actually been thinking a lot about that. Like, what do I want my guys to be based in? And I'm thinking I'm going to go with the desert theme. I don't know. Really? I desert. think so. I'm, uh... I'm pretty set in stone. I'm going to do the... Uh, I'm going to do, like, a, a blizzard, like, ice tundra. Oh, yeah? Uh, thing. I got yeah. some... Uh, I got two bottles of the Helen Blizzard. If you want one... I've got one totally in here. Is. I don't know if I'll need a second one. Thank you, though. All right. I just gorilla glued that to the base. Make sure it's pressed down nicely. I'm gonna let that sit for a minute or two. Um. Speaking. It's a base. Here we go. I do want to show what my kind of plan is. So I got this stuff. This is a uh, Mod Podge. It's a uh, clear drying glue. Um, this is what you're talking to me about yesterday. 
Uh, what was I talking to you about yesterday? Just, no, never mind. I will stop there. Right. <laughs> it was someone else. <laughs> um, I got this uh, kind of fine graded sand, as well as uh, a little bit larger rocks. Don't know that I'm going to be using the rocks. I probably am going to be using the uh, sand just to go around the rest of the base there. Uh, and then I'm going to pop it down on this, spray that down so that it sticks, let it dry. Um, I This is the part where I'm, I kind of don't know because I have zero basing experience. Um, I've, I've legitimately never based a model in my life. Um, I kind of started on my Troglodon for my Seraphon army, but I haven't finished it. So I think I want to use this, glue it down, uh, so it's got like a dirt texture to it, like a, kind of a rocky texture, and then I'm going to use some of that. Uh, some of these uh, green tufts here, just in small patches, get a little greenery on that, and then cover them with uh, the Valhalla Blizzard. I think it sounds great. Hopefully it works out. Don't really know. Got a lot of work to do before I get to that point, though. Basing is my favorite because it's like the least stressful part. <laughs> really? Oh yeah. Because like the model's done, and the basing is just there. You know, like it doesn't have to look magnificent, and it's just so relaxing. I believe it. Okay. Should be should be good and dry enough for me to at least start painting on it a little bit. Um oh, I should have researched this. I don't know what light blue I should do. Should I do Baharas blue, do you think, for the lighter tint? Or do you think that's too uh too light teal y? Yeah, that, that's how I feel with, um, so, Temple Guard Blue is, like, pretty sim simple to that, I mean, similar to that, you know? And I feel like they're really good for doing a glowing effect. Okay. But, yeah. but like, on, a, on, like, the back of a cave, it wouldn't look I, I do something like a, like, I got uh, Blue Horror. That's great. You think that's good? Yeah. I think Blue Horror would be good. Yeah, I was even thinking, like, Rust Gray mixed with uh, your Cantor Blue. Oh, interesting. I could, ooh, huh. I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna experiment some. I'm gonna get some of this blue horror onto my wet palette here. Ooh, I hate white paint. Why is that? It just gets so clumpy. So like when you're doing layers, it's like so streaky, and it makes your smooth my my smooth uh, shoulder pads all of a sudden very unsmooth. Oh, I see. Adding just a couple drops of water to this uh, blue horror to make it a bit more tangible. It's not flowing too well. It's pretty clumped up. Intangible. Alright, so. Pick and choose. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna see. As much of that as I can. I'm gonna see what the blue horror looks like just by uh, putting it on the model. If I don't like it, then I think I'm gonna try and wet blend some blue horror with the Cantor blue. See how that goes. I've only wet blended once in my life, and it actually turned out pretty all right but there we go let's just you know that's not bad um not bad it's really light i think it's going to take quite a few layers to uh really start to show up but i think i, I think i like it Be like, yeah, I probably can't see that at all. It's 
It's a good thing I went with the gray sear primer. Um, I'm also going to be using this uh, blue whore to highlight the top of the cape after I uh, shade it. I'm going to be shading it with the... Uh, Shoot, what's it called? It's a Darken, Drakenhof Nightshade. Yeah. What are you doing over there? You got a creamy color? Uh, yeah, I got... I'm using the Pallid Witch Flesh, and I'm putting on the second layer on my armor and shield. I don't know why we got a camera on me when Evan's way better at this than I am. No, 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 no. I mean, I am not. Yeah, you and are. And I say all the time on our streams and in person that I do not claim to be the best or even well, a Yeah, good you don't claim painter. to be. No. It doesn't mean you're not. We've got some amazing painters in our, uh, in our oh, community. Oh, yeah, there are a lot of super talented painters. Uh, we got... There's another Will in the uh, Discord who uh, also painted some Seraphon guys up, and every time he posted pictures, I was just blown away. He's uh, he's super talented, and I wish I could. It's I don't know. It's not healthy to like compare yourself to other people, right? Right. right. But it's it's like inspiring almost to see other people do an awesome paint job. Right. And like, that first model of yours that you hold that has a good paint job. And you're like, I just did this. Right. Not to get all preachy, but that's what the that's what these things are for. It's just time for us to relax, do a little stream, so we can do whatever we want. Right. Um, but there's this great um, goes by Cure the Dawn. Um, I should research it more, but he talks about how you know that thing that we're always told growing up. You know, beauty is in the eye of the beholder, and uh, he says that is strictly applicable to um, success, of success is in the eye of the beholder, um, how, you know, you, you can t he takes it to obviously, you know, comparing the life, the life's the life with, uh, you know, someone who's, you know, living in New York, upstate, and making all this money, and, you know, can eat out, and do whatever he wants, and then compares it, you know, to all these other people, and not necessarily where I'm, I'm going with this thought of just even applying it to something as little as you know miniature painting or uh you know your your hobby of success is strictly in you know who you want it to be beheld by like absolutely um and there there's many ways i can you know talk about this example of you know someone who might be estranged from their parents that's their parents' opinion is no longer um, how they view their success. But to someone else, that is how they view, you know, their success in their life is by, you know, the people they love and their opinions. Um, and I think the best thing we can do for ourselves is realize that it is good to want, you know, other people's opinions and to be better by other people's suggestions, but the person we should be trying to impress the most is ourself. And if you, you know, coming back into miniature painting to try to, you know, lessen the seriousness of this conversation, if you like the way your miniature looks, then it looks good. Like, that's, that's the only thing that matters, is if you like the way it turned out, if you like the scheme, if you like the idea and you're proud with how your miniature looks then that's all that really should matter yeah. because you're proud of it and 
if you all of a sudden are not proud of it because of someone else's comment, like that's that's not helping you or anyone in the slightest. Uh, you don't gain anything, and also, you know, the the other person isn't gaining anything. Um, it, it should all be about how you feel about your successes. Right. Yeah, going off of that, um, one of Brandon Sanderson's lectures, he, uh, the very first lecture he does, uh, he has posted on YouTube right now, he uh, talks about the success rate of uh, authors. Um, and one of the things he talks about is there, it is 100% possible to go your entire life writing novels, maybe even finish a couple hundred of them and never get published. And you need to ask yourself right now that if that does happen to you, will you still be happy with what you did with your life? And if you say yes, then awesome, go for it. Then it doesn't, it doesn't matter at that point, right? Like if, right. if there's no pressure to publish, you're just writing to write, to have fun. Because that's what you love. Because that's what you love. It's your passion. Then you're in. And you, you've already succeeded at that point. was my TED talk <laughs> <laughs> no no it's, it's a really good thing to remember of you know if you're defining success as something that actually doesn't make you happy then like who wants to be successful right right like success should be for you your, your personal success should be something that makes you happy and yeah I mean Enough, enough said <laughs> nothing right. really more to go off of that it's just find something that makes you happy and a lot of times you kind of get stuck in this mindset of like oh, okay like that the thing I want to do that makes me happy what if I don't succeed and I don't have money to pay for life anymore and I would suggest that find something first that makes you happy and you know still have a job you know keep a job done <laughs> And, right. and then if it ever turns into something that you can make a career off of, then awesome. You know, you hit the money pile. But really, it should just be about, you know, having fun. And that doesn't, you know, light reality hits. And that's that's not going to be 100% of your day every single day. But even if it's, you know, once or twice or three times a week, then that's great. You know, yeah. I, I, I need to be painting more because it's just, for me, it's so relaxing. It's so rewarding and I don't do it enough and I don't get you know paid you know I'm not some amazing YouTube miniature painter you know I'm not getting paid to paint every week uh, right. and yet I still do it because I like it and speaking of that let's I got man I almost have feel like I have nothing to show I'll kind of switch over to this overhead view yeah you take it and uh, kind of show you a close up, but it's really hard to see white on white on cream. <laughs> it's all gonna look pretty much the same, but uh, I have the shield, his breastplate, shoulder pads, wrists, they're all white. Um, and then obviously that cream cape down there, or robes, loincloths, however you wanna say it. Uh, so I'm going to keep on working at this, but these next few steps for me should be uh, more visible to see. What are you working on over there right now? I am still putting layers on the bottom side of the cloak. Okay. I really like the blue horror, but it's really light, and so I'm going to have to be applying a couple layers. Okay. So I'm just going to need some boring, boring stuff that you're not going to be able to notice when I'm done, essentially, is what it is. But it adds to the mosaic of the moment. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> it's the famous quote, you know, if you do your job right, no one will notice. It's only when you do the job wrong that people notice, yeah. right? Amen. That's uh, actually my aunt. <laughs> she, uh... <laughs> She was telling just a funny story. It was years after it happened, so it was, it was a, you know, she wasn't <laughs> being scolding to her husband at all. Um, but 
she was saying that you know sometimes you don't get recognized and the best way to get recognized is to stop doing <laughs> the thing and uh so one day she just she's like i'm not gonna do the laundry or the dishes and i'm not gonna make dinner tonight and she just stopped and her husband came home at like six and he's just like what happened to the house and she's like nothing nothing happened i just didn't do anything <laughs> and she was like and then from there on our relationship was better <laughs> Life lessons were learned. Yeah, life lessons were learned. Are you guys playing any two of it? No. No. Do you need spots? No. Oh, gosh. I freaking hate working with this light stuff. Because it looks the exact same as, like, so close in shade to my primer. Right. Yeah, it can get super discouraging. And then you feel like you don't, you're not making progress, but you are. Even, am I even painting right now? <laughs> <laughs> Are we streaming? <laughs> Speaking of which, I have, there are no comments the first two times I've checked, but let's, let's check. No, no comments. No and if you're comments. there, don't, don't feel like you have to. Just know... We are also lonely. <laughs> <laughs> Let us share it with you. Let us share. Holy crap. I am... Sorry. sorry. No, no, please. I am... I don't know if you can see this on the camera. Yeah, I'll There's, switch over to this. Just got me real quick. I just... I'm looking at this model. There is a... There is a scabbard underneath the top cloak but above the bottom cloak and that is going to be a nightmare to paint <laughs> that is going to be awful to paint i'm not excited for it oh yeah we uh you were talking about that earlier about the painting before you build yeah painting before you build which is something that i know is the better way to do it you know but it's just like i i don't have that dedication or right mindset. i just like, want i just want to see this cool model yeah built, right uh, uh, my girlfriend Serena, she's she paints as she builds all the time. She has yet to build a model fully and then paint it. Um, it's and, like I super respect, but I cannot do. It. Right? Yeah. Like that's so much dedication. Um, and it's absolutely rewarded. Like, not not saying that if you build your model before you paint it, it's going to turn out bad. Oh, anything, right, for sure. But... No, but her models, like, honestly, look so good. She's a very good painter. Ooh. Well, this is the first time I've done lead belcher on a Wraithbone primed model, and it it just looks amazing. Look, look at that. Come up close. You can see like the white coming through the Whoa. edges there. It's like an edge highlighted for me. That's super sweet. Right? That looks way good. I take back everything I ever said about white primers. <laughs> <laughs> I hate white paint so much. Alright. I've got... I'm starting to get pretty good... Uh, blue horror on the bottom of this cape here it's still not showing up quite how I would like it to but that's all right I think honestly once I paint the rest of it it'll really pop also once I shade it so I'm pretty happy with it I'm just gonna go back get a couple more spots that I noticed really use it I also this part's gonna be really difficult I might go get a new brush for this part actually what part uh, I need to highlight the trim on the uh, corner of the cloak right here. That's on top of it. Oh, yeah. And it's like super thin and super small. Here. I have some shaky hands. Oh, look at that. Look at that. What'd y'all look up on? Have you, have you eaten the paint off of this brush before? Uh, yes. Okay. I will not eat the paint off of the brush as well then. Unless I'm allowed to. Uh, do as you wish. <laughs> I do not have the Rona. Me neither. I used to actually, uh, as a kid, I was a big germaphobe. Same. 
uh, I would not even I, touch like the lid of like a pop can that my siblings drank out of, you know? Cause yeah. I was so worried. I uh, I always use my shirt to cover my hand before opening a doorknob. Oh yeah, I would, it, like without fail, every time I touch a doorknob, I put my shirt over my hand. I, st- I actually still do that in bathrooms. Yeah, same. Yeah. yeah, I I always try to like use the paper towels that I dry my hand with to yeah, grab the Yeah, exactly. Door, but if I forget or can't do that, then I definitely. I'm not alone. Yeah, public restrooms are rancid. <laughs> and with that plug. I will say that we at Game Grid do clean our bathrooms. So, uh, legitimately cleanest game shop bathrooms you will find in Utah. Yeah, seriously, especially now with our uh, spray gun that we use. Oh yeah, we have been sanitizing the shiz out of that bad boy. I'm not joking either. Come, come check out our bathroom. Come quote me on it. Take, yeah, I take uh, pictures. Take pictures of every other game shop bathroom in the valley. <laughs> I, uh, I actually spray the toilet as well. So I'm like, yeah, you know, whatever. It, it's going to evaporate in the next 10 seconds. Might as well have the next person who use it have like a Squeaky freshness. Clean. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that is one thing that we have always been good at. Not always, but for a good while, we've been good at it. So uh, on the on the topic of eating paint, which uh, you should not do, children. <clears throat> um, the lead belcher paint is particularly bad. Metallic paints just taste disgusting. Ooh, they've got metal in them. I don't <laughs> think you should be eating that. I'm not. I'm not. Evan, I'm not stop eating, eating metal I'm paint. Not, I'm not eating paint. I'm just. I'm cleaning it off with my mouth. I wasn't picking my nose. I had a scratch on the inside. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We here at Game Grid do not condone the eating of paint. Oh, shoot. I totally missed this part. God. The line cloth on this dude always gets me. Both times, I think I'm finally done with (laughs) this color, and then the line cloth's not even touched. This model is so difficult to paint. Oh, yeah. I'm doing this to prove that you can paint this model without, (laughs) uh, after it's built. (laughs) But if you are planning on painting this model, I cannot recommend enough you paint as you build. Even if it's just this one model, just the fact that the empty armor makes it so you have to get everything. I probably will paint him in pieces. And looking at, like... Looking at these horse guys, I uh, think it would be best to paint them as you go. Mounts generally I, are easier to paint as you go. But I probably won't. Right? <laughs> I just want to have my horse guys. That's uh, that's if the epitome of these paint nights is me giving advice and then not <laughs> following them. Like, just barely, I left my paint brush in there, which you should never, ever do. And I did it. Just start a counter every time that <laughs> gives ding, advice ding, that he ding, doesn't ding, follow. Ding. It's like a uh, wet blending. I hate wet blending, but it looks very good, and I should do it. I just hate the process. It's very stressful for me, and the whole point of painting for me, as I said, is supposed to be non-stressful, <laughs> right. and just like I'm a very slow painter. I have pretty shaky hands, uh, so it's not as easy as it was years ago to paint. And so, like having to like get your paint to a certain uh, di- dilutation, yeah, um, and then coming back with another paint and just going back and forth, it's just it ain't a fun experience for me. Feel that. Yeah. I don't know when my hands got so shaky. 
at some point he started disagreeing with me. <laughs> My relationship with them is no good. <laughs> also, you know what? Painting, this is, this is a tip that I will be doing that you should do too. Getting inside that helmet is going to be absolutely a nightmare. Oh, oh that's going to be terrible. And actually, this is a perfect time for me to show you guys what I've been meaning to show forever. So, um, I don't know exactly the names for these. I just call them rods and then the drill stick or you know, a little drill bit. Um, but these are awesome. Um, you can see uh, Squidmar, uh, which I've seen people post in the chat. Uh, Miniac, which is my favorite. Um, and then also, ooh, my third favorite. I always say Megzuki. I think it's Mezguki or something. Those are my three favorite miniature painters and they all use these. Uh, and how it works is it has this little oiled bit at the back here and it sits in your palm so that you can twist with one hand. Um, and if you ever need to paint a specific little piece like this head, you know, that'd be a nightmare to hold it and then try to get in there. Uh, you know, your fingers are just too big for that. So what you do is you drill into the plastic and then you use a rod that is the same size as this drill bit here. You put it in and then you stick it on some cork or you know on your little handheld thing and it just gives you a wide range of uh, flexibility and hand movement. You don't have to hold it with one hand to get in there tiny. So if you're ever looking to kind of step up your paint game on tiny pieces, not necessarily tiny details, uh, I would definitely invest in one of those hand drills and the rods. I always wondered what those were for. Yeah. They seem so weird. Maybe I should do, instead of blue, I should do red, just despite, like, Game Grid and Jordan, you know, like just make them mad. Because <laughs> Jordan, yeah, that'll yeah. show him. Because Jordan hates red. Oh yeah, huh? Yeah. And Game Grid's colors are blue. Also, it's the color of communism. <laughs> also, if Jordan's listening, uh, I was joking about the whole spite thing. Well, I think I'm gonna recolor mine. Are you? <laughs> oh, you know, maroon would look super cool. Or maybe purple. I'm so indecisive. If you ever played me or met me in the Warhammer type of mindset, you know that I am very indecisive with my decisions. So I am doing the Minotaur, though. Go ahead. <laughs> no, I just said same. No, it's looks blue. Okay. That's the one thing I feel about spending so much time in my hero phase casting spells. Also, just because I must think so much about who I gotta target. Or right. Crow can cast four spells. What four spells do I want to cast targeting? Uh huh. Them? Um, what I'm gonna do is. Um, that's pretty. Interesting. I might. Just a second. I'm gonna figure this out before. Yeah, this is exactly what I'm gonna do. Okay. So I'm gonna do my blue, in Aldorf Guard blue. It's a, it's, it's a pretty mute blue in the mute. It's like a middle grade blue, but gray. Um, and then I'm gonna darken it up, and kind of bring more blue back into it, kind of closer to the Cantor blue that Will's using, with my Drakenhof Nightshade. And then I'm gonna edge highlight very minimally because these are small blue details uh, with rust gray. Kind of bring back that gray look with a blue. That's because again, I want my guys to be more uh, mute. I really like the mute look. Um, I always try to tone down my reds, blues, and greens because uh, I, I really like your mind projecting that something is you know, blue and those colors, but then keeping it more war-torn look. So 
let's start with this Aldorf. Yeah, let's look. It's not looking bad so far. I want to turn over to that and show that off. Okay. So, I got Blue Horror on the under part of this uh, uh, cape here. Um, I also edge highlighted the uh, insignia that's on the corner of this cloak here. It got really messy. I don't have a steady hand. I'm not cut out for that type of thing. I think it looks fine. I'm definitely going to go over it again to the Cantor with that tiny brush to uh, be able to fill in the pale spaces that was created by my blue horror mess. But so far it's looking really good actually. I'm, I'm really digging this color scheme. I'm loving that light blue you did. I'm glad yeah. you stuck with it. Right? I like really wasn't sure about it when I started putting it on there, but seeing it dried up now it looks really good. Um, yeah, I'm really excited for this. Um, I think it's going to look even cooler with the, the gold highlights on the oh, armor. Yeah. Um, still trying to figure out how I'm going to do that. Um, would you recommend I like do the silver on the plate armor first and then the gold highlights for the trim? Mm -hmm. Or do you think I should do the trim first? No, no, no definitely. Because you're going to go over that trim. Like, I'm going to. Like, I've already gone over a few things here. So yeah. definitely base first. Okay. decided. It is decided. It has been declared. I do declare. I do declare. No. no. I can't tell. We're not gonna give up. Not today. Not tomorrow. Anyway. Maybe the next day. <laughs> Maybe the next day. But who could say? All we've got is today. And that's okay. Closing. Closing. And that's a wrap. Okay. Uh, All right, episode two it, next week. <laughs> Remember to like, comment, subscribe. Yeah. Smash that subscribe button. I hate people so much. Was that you that I was talking to about, like, when I hear them say that, it makes me, like, not want to yeah. do it? Yeah. Yeah, when people are, like... it, it's, it's one thing to, like, say to subscribe at the end of the video. Yeah. Or, like, even in, like, words. If they don't say it, it's just, like, in the middle. I like that. Yeah, something like that. But, like, when they're just doing, like, generic, like, comment, subscribe, you know, I'd, like, instantly click out of the video. And no, watch the really? Yeah. <laughs> You're like, I am not watching right. this video. But like at the end, if like the content creator like just shows himself like, hey guys, if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. You know, it really does help me out a lot in the long run, something like that. And like, I don't that's genuine. That's like right. them actually putting a little bit of effort into it. Other than just like quickly, uh, I got to say this because everyone else is saying it. Right. And I, I remember years ago, I'd, uh, I'd like like and subscribe everything because I was like this is oh, their really? livelihood you know like I need to help them out and uh, I'm much more uh, conserved with my likes now absolutely it's just fun I feel like uh, I actually kind of feel like YouTube's slowly going to the wayside like Instagram and Vine not Vine uh, TikTok yeah. Like are huge, um, just so interesting. Cause I just you know in my mind YouTube was was the thing. That's like where you watched videos. You know I I was like six or eight when YouTube like became a thing. You know so like it's always been a part of like if I want to watch a video, you go to YouTube. Right. If I could work my will, then I could finish the cape before I leave. I've got to be jetting off here in like 20 minutes probably, but...
I think I could probably finish the cave by then. I gotta do another quick edge highlight with this blue horror. Oh jeez, camera's still on me. Oh, sorry. Do you, do you want, want, to... Do you want to move the camera back? I'm gonna be clenched over this thing. Yep. I'm not gonna be able to see anything. I'm sorry, guys. You don't get to see my shaky handwork. You mean that beautiful side view of your face? I can't even see any of this. Say in the comments how big you think my nose is. <laughs> I, uh, it's been brought to my attention recently. Has it really? By who? Just myself. Like I just like noticed it in the mirror one day. Oh, dude, you totally said it to me when you were driving me to work the other day. Oh, really? Yeah, That's you were funny. like, is my nose big? And I was like, no. <laughs> my, uh... <laughs> My great grandfather had a monster nose. There's a little schnauzer. And, uh, my little brother has it too. And like ever since like pointing him out, I've like thought about my nose. I'm like super. I'm not like super self conscious about it. But you could definitely use my nose as a rudder on a ship. <laughs> <need it> too. <laughs> oh jeez, it's really not big. Don't worry. The size doesn't matter, man. Stop, please stop. <laughs> God damn it, Evan. <laughs> it's fine. Alright. Well, you know, that's what I was going to do. I remember laying in night. I was laying in night. Uh, I was laying in bed last night, and I was thinking, like, I think I'm going to shave off all the symbols and, like, do my own freehand. Really? Uh, and I don't want to do that anymore, because I just looked at the, uh, well, first of all, I've been painting the symbol on the shield. The second off, <laughs> uh, I'm looking at all the shields on the cover here, and they're all different, which I think is fantastic. Oh, really? They yeah. are? Yeah. Look at this. Yeah. Every single one on the shield is different. Which That's is crazy. Awesome detail. That's so sweet. Yeah. yeah. I no, no idea. I actually hyped the paint wall. Yeah, I'm gonna have I'm gonna have Will paint with me from now on. Um, I say it like that, and it makes it seem like this is my show, which I guess it was until now, because now it's Evan's. <laughs> now it's our show. It's our show. Communist music. Yeah, plays. yeah. <laughs> you get half the commissions of what we get, which currently is zero. Because you're getting paid. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing this for free. Actually, weird tangent, but that has been an interesting and present thought lately of people rewatching Office all the time, which I've always just been so like, why? Why would you do that to yourself? I've just been like, there's so many other shows to watch, you know? Yeah. And uh, and it's like, I can get watching a show over like two to three times, but like, after that, like, there's no surprises. Um, yeah. But then, uh, go ahead. I was just going to say real quick, the one exception to this for me is Avatar The Last Airbender. Yeah, that shows me. That. I've rewatched that show more times than I can count, <laughs> and it's great every time. Uh, Continue. No, no, I was just, it was like this uh, epiphany of, uh, I love video game high school. Oh, yeah. I love that show. That show's so cool. I, I watched it when it came out, and like for me, like that was my, <laughs> that was like my first like love romance, you know, it was watching the main characters and like right. it was funny and it was like a positive thing about video games which I really was into back in the day um, and I've rewatched video game high school so many times and it's kind of like this epiphany of like oh because someone had said this to me and I was like yeah like I get that but then it really solidified when I was like oh like I do this because it's comforting like I do it because it has good memories attached to it you know yeah and, like, I even, like, have it playing in the background when I'm, like, painting and I'm not actually, like, watching it. And I was like, oh, I get it now. Like, so all those people that I was like, dude, I can't believe you're watching Office again. I'm sorry. I apologize. And you can watch The Office all you want. Just please stop after, like, ten times and watch, like, Community or something. Because there are other funny shows. 
<laughs> a little double standard there that I just gave. What's a show that you're digging right now, Will? If there is one. There's actually not one I'm watching right now. Um, I've been watching a lot of true crime documentaries lately. Really? Um, I don't know what it is about true crime. It, I really enjoy it, though. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. They put Avatar on uh, Netflix. Good. And, like, at first I got excited, but then I was like, ah, I, I own it on Blu-ray already. <laughs> like, oh, really? <laughs> I can just rewatch it anytime I want. Wind is gnarly. Yeah, that wind is crazy. I don't think I'm going to finish this cape. Doing these tassels here on the end. Would you, are you going to be able to come Tuesday night? I think so. Awesome. I don't believe I have anything going on Tuesday. Because those are our regular paint nights. Ah, uh, yeah. Shaky hand. Destroyed that shield. I'm going to have to go back with, like, three layers and fix that white. And that is another reason I hate white. It's so hard to Everything fix. Everything so shows through oh, it. Oh, man. So hard to fix. Paint white is difficult. I, I just take the passive route and just refuse to work with it. <laughs> yep, uh -huh. that's what I do. My life is much easier because of it, but none of my models have white on them, so it's a give take, I suppose. And some lose some. Yeah, these. I think. All right, I'm gonna take a quick break from painting the tassels on this. Yeah. That's gonna take me a minute. I want to get this uh, Drakenhof nightshade on the cloak. Mm. I think. So that'll take a little bit of time to dry. Yeah. Which will give me the time necessary to. Actually, uh, I usually batch paint, so this is interesting. The, the lone model. Uh huh. I want to batch paint my skinks, cause I got a good color scheme on my skinks that I really like. Uh huh. And it's pretty easy to do. And I have like forty skinks. Can I see that fine brush? You have 40 skinks to paint still? Yeah. <laughs> and so, I want to go back and batch paint them. But, here I am buying more models. I uh, used metal. My bad. What? I was saying you used metal paint on this brush. Oh, is that okay? Oh, yeah. No, that's... It's fine. I, I just... Metal paint was going into my blue paint, and oh, I was like, shoot. "Oh dang it!" I didn't I'm wash sorry, it out. No, 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 no. I thought that's, I washed it out all right. Uh, that's okay. I'll never borrow your brush I'll again. <laughs> I've ruined myself. My phone is blowing up. I gotta see what's going on with that. I'm also glad to have a second person here because sometimes I can get like super um, focused on my painting and I don't talk for like a minute. Same. And I'm like, oh shoot, I'm streaming. Yeah, it is difficult to carry conversations by yourself. Oh, it is. Anyone who's been on a bad date can relate with that. <laughs> oh man, it's like. Such a killer too. Oh, it like, is, and you're like, I'm not, I'm not going on a date with this person. Anymore. Everything you ask is one or two word answers. Yeah, they're like, yeah, it was a good day. I'm like, cool. What do you do? Uh, I, you know, I worked. I worked. 
Like, like watching TV. What do you like watching? Like the Office. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm on my uh, I'm on my 27th run of The Office. I'm like, oh, okay. Yet again, I want to make sure that everyone knows that it's okay to watch It's okay to watch The Office. We're not saying there's anything wrong with The Office. I actually love The Office. I really do. I've seen the whole series definitely twice, maybe three times. I actually never sat through and watched The Office all the way. Yeah. But I've definitely, I know I've seen it all because like all my friends watch it, so I've seen like Episodes out of place. I love watching clips on like Instagram. Yeah. Actually, I don't know if I've seen the last season. Because everyone doesn't like the last season, apparently. It's it's not great. It's not it's not really terrible. It's just not The Office, really. Okay. Because after Michael leaves, I think Steve Carell was actually a writer on the show. No, that's wrong. Do not quote me on that. That's probably very wrong. Um, oh, I think I'm going to regret that. What would you do? Put the Drakenhoff nightshade on the bottom of the cloak, where it's super light. Let me see. I don't want to spread it out. The lucky thing about that is that it's easily fixable. Just another layer of blue horror. Yeah. What? looks fine. It looks great. It looks okay. It's not even dry yet either, but... Okay. Well, it has been a good, good hour and a half. Wow, we've been streaming that long already. Uh huh. That's crazy. So let's do a little showcase of what we did, and then we'll kind of sign off. All right. First, while you finish up whatever you're doing. Alright, like I said, I didn't get too far today, guys, but I, let's see, what's in, uh, I got some blue on that shield, just a little bit on his breastplate up there, I definitely gotta go fix up that blue, and the white, especially on that shield, I, I went over a lot, ooh, man, that is, that wind is just getting nasty, um, cream, I'm gonna, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put uh, the shade in the recesses the, and then the folds. And I'm going to highlight with that pallid witch flush. Um, I'm probably, if you want, well, I'm going to keep working on this guy, even on Tuesday. Uh, so yeah. you guys will see, hopefully, this guy to completion. Um, I won't work on him, which is going to be hard, because I do want to finish him. 
but I will keep this guy for our paint night on Tuesday. I think I'm going to try and finish this guy before then so that I can bring my Realm Shaper engine to work there on Tuesday. I have been working on that for like four or five months now. <laughs> Fair and enough. here I am buying another army. Um, <laughs> this is progress I made on uh, the Light of Eltharian, though. Um, I got that uh, the blue cape mostly done. Uh, I just barely put some Drakenhoff Nightshade on that. Got some light blue horror highlights on the top. I put it on the bottom of the cape. I think I think that's fine. It looks kind of weird, but at the same time gives it like more of a natural flow to it. Um, I might go back and highlight the edges with more blue horror or even a white, um, something like that. I'm going to be doing this the rest of these uh, tassels, this gold color. Um, I'm also going to be doing some green highlights down here and some uh, stone highlights, but take a good look. Hopefully next, uh, by Tuesday, I'll have this painted. Probably not. I'm a busy man, but, but yeah, that's all I have to say about that. Well, before we sign off tonight, guys, I definitely want to say thank you for joining in, and those who watch later, thanks for watching. Uh, super excited to play. Um, but before, yeah, before I click off, we're going to roll a die. And uh, this is how many jumping jacks Will's got to do before he goes to bed tonight. So, five jumping jacks. I'll do that right now. Right now? Okay, let's I like see. It. Four I don't know. Jumping jack in a thousand days. Oh man. I do it so that. I, I need here. perfect form. Yeah, yeah. Perfect we're gonna. Form. You're gonna get the. All right. Let's see it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you gotta you gotta make sure you get that area. All right, all oh, right. Nice. You see that? All right, like and subscribe. <laughs> Hit that smash button. Thanks, everyone. Let us know if watching. you like Will doing jumping jacks. It's been a good time. Evan signing off.